Good day, I'm Brian Farrell, and welcome to Pace IT's session on implementing a basic network. Today we're going to discuss plan the network and then configure the network. There's a fair amount of ground to cover, so let's go ahead and dive into this session. Of course, I'm going to begin with plan the network. So you need a simple small office, home office network? Great, just plug two PCs into a single hub and you have a very basic network. But does it achieve what you want? How do you know if you don't have a plan? A network plan is vital when implementing any network more complicated than the most very basic of networks. That plan should cover what you are hoping to achieve and how you are going to get there. In addition to your expertise, you are also going to need input from your end users. Nothing is quite so frustrating as delivering the network that you've planned and built and having the customer tell you that it is not what they wanted or needed. Let's talk about that network plan in a little bit more detail. The first thing that you should do is create a list of requirements. Now, in order to make that list, you need to define why the network is needed. That will help you to define what network features are required. Then you need to define the scope or size of the network. Once you have those, they will help to establish a budget to implement that network. Once you know why the network is needed and what features are required, then you can work on network design. In network design, you need to determine what equipment is needed to implement that network. Part of the design is also how the network will be organized and how shared resources will be placed on the network. When you're planning the network, something that you should also consider are compatibility issues. You need to know what standards are in use now and what standards will there be in the future. Included in those compatibility issues are does any current equipment that is required need specific cabling or connectors in order to be installed. That is something that often gets overlooked. Your network plan also needs to deal with network cabling runs, your internal connections. How many node connections will be required and where? How will you plan for future expansion? That future expansion is more than likely going to require more internal connections. You should build in some tolerance for future expansion. Then you need to consider external connections. How will the network connect to the outside? Where will that WAN connection come into your building and where will your equipment be placed so that it can reach those WAN connections? That is also part of the network equipment placement plan. Part of that plan also needs to consider if there is a wiring or equipment closet and where it's going to be located. If you do have a wiring or equipment closet, are there environmental considerations about placing the equipment in there. Is it too hot? Is it too cold? Is it too humid or is it too dry? You need to think about those things when you're placing your network equipment. Your plan should also cover how network security will be implemented. Are there specific types of firewall and placement considerations for those firewalls? Will virtual local area networks be required? And if so, how many? Also, how will your switch security be implemented. All of these go into a successful network plan. Now let's talk about configuring the network. Here are some network configuration considerations for you. First up, how will your clients receive their internet protocol addresses, their IP addresses? Using static IP address configuration creates a higher level of security but it's harder to manage. You could use Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol, DHCP, to automatically assign IP addresses from a pre-configured pool, but your security may be a little bit lower if you do so. If you do use DHCP, you might want to consider using MAC filtering. 
MAC filtering will only allow specified MAC addresses, that physical burned in address, onto the network. It is an effective security measure, but kind of like static IP addressing, it can be difficult to control and manage, especially as the network grows. Something else to consider is that if a server will be hosted on the network that needs to be accessed from outside of that network, as in you're hosting a web server, then you're going to need a demilitarized zone, a DMZ. The DMZ is an area of the network in which outside connections are allowed while the internal network remains protected from that outside traffic. A DMZ will require a custom configuration of the firewall. In most implementations, two firewalls are used, but it's not necessary to use two firewalls. Talking about firewalls, firewall placement and configuration considerations are next. Most small office, home office, WAN connection devices, as in their cable modems or DSL modems, include firewall services that are sufficient in most cases for those small, simple networks. But if a DMZ needs to be deployed, the best method is to introduce an additional router and firewall into the network, with the DMZ residing between the WAN equipment and the new router firewall combination. Another aspect of deploying a DMZ is that port forwarding should also be used at the router firewall level. Port forwarding is used to direct requests for specific resources, like a request for a web page, to the computer that has the resource. Let's move on to wireless network configuration considerations. The first thing to consider in a wireless network is the name of the wireless network. That's the service set identifier, the SSID. Now, the SSID can be set to broadcast in the clear. Alternatively, the SSID can be set for the broadcast to be hidden. Some people consider hiding the SSID broadcast as a security measure, but it really doesn't work that way. It doesn't stop the broadcast. It only hides the broadcast. A packet sniffer can easily see those broadcasts, and those broadcast packets can be easily interpreted. So hiding the SSID is not an effective security measure, but it does make things a little bit more difficult. The next aspect of wireless network configuration that you need to consider is encryption. First off, I will say you need to have encryption on your wireless network. Not only that, but you need to turn it on. By default, wireless routers and wireless access points, WAPs, do not have encryption enabled. And at the minimum, your encryption type should be WPA2 personal. That's at the minimum. Some wireless network equipment comes with a service that is called Wi-Fi Protected Setup, WPS. And if it does, it's enabled by default. This should be turned off and not used as it creates a weakness in the wireless network. Why is that? Well, because WPS can be easily exploited by an attacker. The network that you implement may not be exactly what you planned, so document any changes to the plan. Undoubtedly, during the process of implementing that plan, some changes will be introduced, some by you and some by request of the end user. Always document those changes to the plan and have the end user sign off on them then be sure to incorporate those changes into the final network documentation. Now that concludes this session on implementing a basic network. I talked about plan the network, and then I talked about configure the network. On behalf of Pace IT, thank you for watching this session, and I'm sure I'll do another one soon.